A leak from a New York Times employee town hall has revealed that the newsroom was specifically geared towards the Trump and Russia collusion uh, story, and then simply moved on to stories about Trump's character as the focus of their in, their entire operation. At least that's what it seems from the editor's own words in this transcript and audio. Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once, and you know, unless I worked for the New York Times. Now, these quotes are leaked uh, to Slate from inside a town hall from the editor Dean Baquet, Be I don't know. I'm French, I should be able to pronounce that. But here are the quotes that are the most damning, telling, whatever you want to call it, about, about the New York Times. It went from being a story about whether the Trump campaign colluded with Russia and obstruction of justice to being more of a head-on story about the president's character. Now, is that necessarily bad in and of itself? No, I don't think it is, especially when you think about everything that went into exploring President Bill Clinton's character, both then and obviously now Jeffrey Epstein, <laughs> cough, cough. But for an entire newsroom to be dedicated to taking down a president seems pretty biased to me. Doesn't seem like objective journalism. And considering we are looking at this through hindsight, we can kind of say that it was probably done under false pretenses, given what we know now. Especially when you factor in the following quote. We built our newsroom to cover one story, and we did it truly well. Now we have to regroup, shift resources, and take on a different story. Again, why focus on just one story? Is, is that what a news entire newspaper with the history of the New York Times is supposed to do? This doesn't make them look good, and when you have a s supremely specific bias here, you should probably be more open about it as opposed to just revealing it behind closed doors. It seems very petty. It's like me saying that I'm going to just focus all of my resources and this entire channel, all my social media and everything, on taking down the Young Turks. Of course, I don't have to do that. They suck pretty bad on, themselves, on their own. So, mm, take that how you, how you ever please. So, what's the next story? What's he talking about? Let's move on to the next story. Well, a staff member then poses this question, this comment. These conversations about what is racist, what isn't racist. I just feel like racism isn't everything. It should be considered in our science reporting, our culture reporting, in national reporting. And so to me, it's less about individual instances of racism and sort of how we're thinking about racism and white supremacy as a foundation of all the systems in this country. Now, of course, this is a very far left way of thinking, which shows you the type of people they actually have employed there at the New York Times. And just to get into it a little bit, if true, you would have to argue that the abolition of slavery, the abolition of Jim Crow laws, the civil rights move movement were all done under the guise of white supremacy and were done so ironically, I guess, as a lie to pretend that the country isn't based in racism and white supremacy. And it kind of makes no sense to do that if you're a white supremacist. So I would say that right there, one simple little thought experiment blows that out of the water. And of course, it's the Democrats who had opposed the abolition of all this, opposed giving black people freedoms. So we don't have to get into that. Let's just move on. So how did the boss reply to these comments about racism and it being the foundation of their country? Race in the next year, and I think that this needs to be frank, what I would hope you come away with this discussion with, race in the next year is going to be a huge part of the American story. And I mean race in terms of not only African Americans and their relationship with Donald Trump, but Latinos and immigration. So, as if they weren't dividing people enough with Trump and Russia, which became obviously, I don't know if you want to call it a hoax, but I think that people who were paying attention from the start knew that it came up out of thin air, and then they try to sort of build the story around it to get Trump in any way they could. As if they weren't dividing people enough with that investigation and focusing all their power and all their resources, as they say, on this one story. This says to me that since we couldn't stop Trump from getting elected with Trump Russia, let's spend the next year leading up to the election by trying to prove that Trump is a racist. Now, if they're going to spend all of their resources, as they claim, are we going to get uh, f fake claims that Trump has said racist things in the past. I mean, Michael Cohen said that he has, but he didn't have anything on tape. A lot of people have s give examples of not uh, renting to, to people of color. Oh, I hate that phrase. I'm so Just as a side note, people of color was not a term for the last 20 years 
until Trump was elected. People brought it back to try to lump all people who are non-white together as as victims of Donald Trump and as a collective. And I really think that bringing that phrase back in itself is prejudice or racist, if you want to call it, because you're saying that basically anyone who's non-white is the same. Is a Chinese person the same as a West African? Of course not. And they don't have to think alike. They don't have to have a monolith. People who are black from different countries or even different parts of the United States think completely differently because their lifestyles are completely different. So I think it's a nonsense idea to begin with. So I think they're going to spend the next year trying to prove that Donald Trump is racist because you know what, they have nothing less. You have credible arguments to Donald Trump not being reelected. You could go um, the budget being exploded, the deficit, sorry. You could go with the deficit spending. You could go with the budget, matter of fact. You could go with why don't they provide free college because in some cases that's affordable. And in some cases, it's obviously not depending on where you're funneling your money to as a federal budget. So there are valid ways to argue against Donald Trump, but they've dug in so far. Their trench is so deep. It's not a two-meter trench or a, a five-foot trench in World War II. It's a 30-foot trench leading to a bunker that you cannot get out of. So they have to keep going all in. And what I want to know from you guys is, is this a good idea? Is this what the reader should just expect from the New York Times and, frankly, probably the Washington Post at this point? I don't think there's any secret there. Should they be more open about their biases in their reporting? Or is that up for you and me, the readers, of all these things to find out and figure out for ourselves? Let me know.